It's good to be here, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing. What are we saying? What are we saying? <laughs> Heaven came down.
may be seated. Brother Dudley. I'm coming. The announcement man, some people's favorite. Right. Stephen Ann, his favorite <laughs> thing on me. That's all you can. That's all you can? <laughs> Come to the front row if you want, please. I don't Okay, I won't spit. That, that's his job. He, he'll do all the spitting over here. Good morning. Good, morning. Good looking crowd. Right. We got trouble brewing back in this corner. We got Wanda, Sue, and Judy all sitting together. <laughs> Larry Burchell, you got a job this morning. You watch him. All right. Dickie, things go rough back there. You drag them out, okay? Hey, if you're a first time guest with us today, we are excited that you're here. Will you please do us a favor? Uh, and on the back of the pew in front of you, you'll see these little guest cards. Please fill that out for us. It gives us a, uh, a record of your attendance here that you've been here. Tell us a little bit about you. And, of course, if you've got any concerns, prayer concerns, you can write those on the cards as well. You can drop them off on those offering plates there in the back of the uh, sanctuary. And I always tell this story, and, and he does it every week. I mean, he does it every single week. He will take these, Brother Farewell, and he lays it out on his desk, and he prays over those cards. He prays for you and your family. And... Uh, uh, so anything that you need to add on there, you can jot down in the bag. Just do that for him, please. And uh, uh, it means a lot to us. We won't come to your house and bother you and harass you or anything. Steve might, but the rest of us won't. Uh, just drop them off, like I said, at the back of the sanctuary. That's also, you can drop your ties and offerings off back there as well. We don't pass the plate like we used to. You know, that old COVID thing happened. We changed all that, you know. So they're back there. You can give online at ffbcjonesville.com. There's a little drop-down window there that says giving. You can give there, you can set it up to where it's recurring, and you don't have to worry about it anymore if you don't want to. You can also drop it off your tithes and offerings anytime during the week here at the office and uh, leave it with them. Here in a little bit, when Brother Farrell comes forward, if you have children that are fourth grade or younger, they can get up quietly and they can head to the other end of the church, and they'll have church down there for the kids as well as we worship in here. That being said, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Bow you guys, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. Uh, we know that you love us. We, uh, uh, we just want to be present with you today. We want to feel you. We want to be with you. We want to be focused on you. Let's, let's forget all of our problems and things that are going on in this world, this country right now. Let's be focused on your word today as Brother Farrell brings it to us. Lord, I ask that you be with him. Be with Brother Farrell and let him deliver it in such a way that we understand it and it just pierces our hearts and our souls and just I mean, let's just bring us home to you, Lord. Jesus, Lord Jesus, we pray this in all of Jesus' people said, Amen. Amen. You know, our Bible said God calls his friend. Let's stand up and sing about it. Friend of God.
I get finished. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen.
know, oftentimes the best lessons are caught, not taught. And it might be as simple as saying a blessing over your meal in a restaurant or in a public place. Saying grace over a Tuesday Blue Plague special when the man in the next booth said, Don't you watch TV? Don't you know that God's a myth? I hate to see you waste your breath, but there ain't no use talking to a ghost that don't exist. The praying man said, Amen. Look up on his plate and say, You may not talk to God right now, but there's going to come a day. Brother, you're a farmer in the field, praying for the rain, or you curse him at the graveside, cause he's called a loved one's name. You can thank him, you can blame him. Either way, you're going to whether you believe in him or not, in the end, everybody talks to God. Man in the booth went quiet because he didn't have a comeback, so he shrugged it off and paid his tax and shuffled out the door. Then the praying man he prayed for the man who drove away, hoping he would see the light before it got too late. And how was he to know he touched an unbeliever's soul? Got to have a conversation to the red lights down the road. Brother, you're born in the field, praying for the rain. Or you curse him at the great side, cause he's called a loved one's name. You can thank him, you can blame him. Either way, you're going to face him. Whether you
Take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 8 in just a few moments. We'll begin in the 48th verse. Um, two or three things. Um, first, in your bulletin, you will find there a nominating committee survey. And you've got a couple of options. Well, you may say you have three, but the third one doesn't count. You wind it up and throw it away. Okay, that, that, we're not going there. You can simply sign your name to it. That's why I told Jay uh, through its just to do. Just sign your name to it. I'll take care of filling out the rest. <laughs> Amen. Or you can, and I hope you already have been, pray that God will direct you where you can serve Him. As you've heard me say many times, we're not saved to sit. We are saved to serve, and He is worthy. Amen? Amen. And so, again, God has a place for everyone, and you just need to be willing to find that place. Be the blessing and be blessed. You fill that out, and then you can put it in the uh, box out of the vestibule. You know, it's not hard to figure out. It says surveys, nominating surveys. Just put it in there. And we'll take care of it from there. But by the way, I, I do say this. Just because you sign up for something doesn't necessarily mean you get it. But it means we're going to prayerfully consider uh, being able to move you into that place that you believe God uh, has called you. Uh, the second thing, we don't say a lot about this. We've kind of suspended our family introductions for the summer. And that's the class that we usually share for those that are considering church membership. Uh, if that happens to be you, let me encourage you. There are some uh, family introduction booklets uh, in the vestibule, and I think uh, Ms. Terry will be sitting out there after church and just stop by and say, I'm just one of those. I'm considering joining, and uh, she'll give you a, a, a booklet. Just take that home, study it, and it's just meant to introduce you to the church, to show you what are our primary doctrines, and if you have any questions, feel free at any time to call me and we'll set up a time where we talk over the phone to discuss what it is that God is doing in this place. Um, somebody said to me this morning, in fact, multiple people have said to me this morning, uh, Brother Farrell, based on the events of yesterday, uh, maybe we ought to pray. If you know me, you know I'm never opposed to prayer. Amen? Amen? By the way, somebody asked me this morning, how do you know the names of people, especially visitors? Well, if you're praying for them on a regular basis, you get to know those names. And you say, well, I didn't turn in a card. That's okay. Uh, God knew your name. And every once in a while, God whispers in my ear, that's who they are. And every Wednesday, I take you. If you've been visiting in this church, I don't care how long you've been visiting, I take your name before the Heavenly Father. That's, that's my day to pray for you. Now, if you give me a visitor's card, you're going to get a little bit, you get bonus prayer coverage. But, uh, uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity. And sometimes I, it takes me a little while to get to know the names, but uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm, that, I'm the kind of guy that says, okay, Lord, I don't remember the name, but you do. And I just kind of shoot that image of that face and uh, ask God to minister uh, in, in your life. Um, but back to the other, uh, I'm not opposed to praying, but here's my challenge to you. I don't care if it was Donald Trump or Joe Biden on that stage yesterday with the assassination attempt. God, there's a source problem there. And it's not Democrat or Republican. Right. The source problem is we're living in a world of sin. Yes, sir. A world whose God is the devil. And what we see is what we're going to see. And we're going to pray. Let's pray for awakening in our land. Amen. Let's pray for revival to come to our country. I will say what you've heard many times. The only hope for America is God. Amen. And so as a church, let's pray that God will be God 
in our midst again. Now, having said that, let's look at the word of the Lord. John chapter 8, beginning in verse 48. Uh, and you're going to notice, you wait to stand. Uh, I see Jeff's grabbing the pew to get ready to get up. Uh, you're going to notice, and I appreciate the song that, that uh, Kevin sung. Uh, I don't know if you, you looked at the passage of scripture, but that's kind of what we're going to be seeing today. John chapter 8, verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Jesus, Say we not well, thou art a Samaritan, and hast a demon, a devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, you dishonor me. And I seek not mine own glory, there is one that seeketh and judges. Very, very, I say to you, if a man keep my saying, he will never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And thou sayest, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, mm, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet. Fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Father, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Lord, we want to praise you today. Because no matter what the world thinks, you're still God. Amen. No matter what the world chooses to believe, Jesus is Christ is still the Son of God, the sacrifice for sin, the one who died, was buried, and rose from again. That's the unalterable truth, whether we believe it or not. Father, I praise you that as God, you have chosen to be in a relationship with fallen man. And I thank you, Lord, that as I look around this auditorium this morning, many most who are here are in that relationship. A relationship that means that you are with them day after day after day. That you will be with them when they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And Lord, you will bring them to where you are, where together you will live forever in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, thank you. But again, as we look to this very moment, I thank you that you're here with us and you're going to minister to our hearts as you know the need in each of our lives. And Lord, I, I pray that we, we've already said this morning to you, here I am, Lord, speak, for I am listening. Because we need to hear from heaven. We need to respond to the one who loves us and desires us. Yes, for your glory, Father, but our own good. I pray, Lord, that we will leave here today, not as we arrive, but changed, cast more in the image of Jesus Christ, your Son. I pray, Father, today that you would forgive me, you would cleanse me, you would empty me, and then you would fill me with your Holy Spirit and preach through me the powerful word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 When Jesus announced to the crowd, I am the light of the world. 
He set off a firestorm of debate with the religious leaders. Chapter 8 reads like a religious trial between the legalistic prosecutors charging the Savior with fraud. Why? Because he claimed to be the Son of God, the Messiah of Israel. The prosecution labeled the Lord as a liar and a lunatic. A false prophet preaching a false hope. For the guilty verdict, they hoped to destroy his ministry and sentence him to death. The evidence they offered was superficial, innuendo, exaggeration based on gossip. The desired outcome of the trial was not justice, but self-serving judgment. The Pharisees served the court as both judge and jury. Now let's join the trial in session, starting with the prosecution's accusation. And the outline we're going to follow is going to be their accusation, the Lord's answer, and then we're going to have a little application at each episode. The accusation. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a demon. The discussion, if you haven't figured it out, turns ugly. As the Lord's opponents question his family connections and his spiritual authority. You are a Samaritan, a dog. And you're demon possessed. I mean, few insults could have carried more anger and bitterness in the first century. In modern vernacular, you are, are you ready? Of illegitimate birth. A hat breed. And you serve not the God of heaven, but the forces of hell. I don't miss this. <clears throat> These are not the accusations offered by an atheistic mob, but by the Jews, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, those who supposedly ordered their steps by the law of Moses. Those who were instructors of God's word. The example of the God that they claimed to serve. These are they that John referred to earlier as vipers. And Jesus will later condemn in Matthew 23 as the blind leading the blind. And next we see the Lord's answer to the accusations. Jesus answers, Where's that coming from? I don't have a demon. I exist to honor my father. You dishonor me. I don't seek my own glory. There is one that seeks and judges. Verily, verily, I say to you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. And Jesus responded, and, and I think rather pointedly, to be polite. I'm not an operative of Satan. I am not demon-possessed. In fact, nothing about the lifestyle, the ministry of Christ would have indicated he was in any way in confluence with the devil. Quite the opposite. Look at all that he did. The miraculous the ministry, the messages. Examination of his life would, would ha have indicated his contradiction, not confluence, contradiction to the devil. I notice Jesus didn't bother answering the charge of earthly illegitimacy. It's hard to answer gossip. He turned the table by using the words, and here it is, over and over again, my what? My father. Your charges not only dishonor me, they dishonor him. What I do is not about my glory. And of course, that was again something very pointed because he knew they lived for their own glory, their own selfish achievements. 
but the glory of the one who sent me. And it is he who seeks to glorify me. He will judge those who reject who I am and what I do. Then the Lord turns the discussion, as he is prone to do, to one's eternal destiny. If a man keep my say, not the tradition, not your version of the law, if a man keeps my say, and he's already told us what, I don't say my own stuff, I just repeat what the Father has spoken to me. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Amen. Now hear what I say. Heed what I say, Jesus speaking. The sentence of death will be set aside and the promise of forever life will be yours. Now quickly, let me just insert an application. The religious leaders use speculation, innuendo, to discredit the life and ministry of Christ. And they said, you are a Samaritan, a half-breed. They attempted to slander the Lord by alluding to what may have been rumored about the conception of the Savior. They were intimating Joseph was not the legitimate father of Jesus. They were using vicious rumors and lies to vilify the reputation of the Savior and to ruin his ministry. Well, here it is. Be careful what you say about someone. You could say amen. Or maybe not. <laughs> I guess it depends on your point of view. Be careful what you say about someone. Know the truth before you speak. Accusing anyone of anything lest you become guilty of destroying someone's life and ministry through gossip and slander. Or in the words of James, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, anger. But the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. Right. Now, let's return to the prosecution's <laughs> accusation. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know, now we know, you have a demon. Why? Abraham is dead. And the prophets have died. And yet, you're saying, if a man keeps my word, he will never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who has died? Are the prophets who are dead? What are you making yourself out to be? See, this was a gotcha moment for the Pharisees as they attempted to condemn Christ by his own words that they had heard even though they didn't understand. And if I can just paraphrase, now we are convinced you're demon possessed, a lunatic. You say, if a man keeps my words, abides by what I say, he will not die. Abraham kept the word of God. The prophets kept the word of God. But guess what? They're all dead. Are you claiming to be greater than them? Greater than Abraham. I mean, he was the father of Israel. Greater than the prophets. Greater than Elijah. Greater than Elijah. Greater than Isaiah. Greater than Jeremiah. Is that what you're saying? Jesus. Now maybe they thought he would plead the fifth. You know, I refuse to answer on the grounds that might incriminate me. But oh, <laughs> they were wrong. The answer. Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It's my Father that honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. You know, there's, there, there's a contradiction there, isn't there? Yet you have not known him. I have known him. And if I should say and agree with you that I don't know him, then I will be the greater liar like you. 
I wasn't pointing to anybody over here now. <laughs> but I know him. And I keep it saying, your father, now we're in trouble. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Now, once again, Jesus said, I I'm not claiming greatness. If I attempt to exalt myself, what is that? It is my father who honors me. The one that you claim to be your God. If I deny who I am in relationship to the Father, then that's the real lie. Now talk about ruffling the feathers. Here it comes. Father Abraham waited with anticipation for my coming. And when I arrived, he rejoiced. Now if they weren't convinced the Lord was insane before, they are now. Now let's just kind of pause. A little application. Number one, self-exaltation is the evidence of selfishness, which is sin. Jesus said, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me. So don't present yourself as someone, as the Pharisees did. You see, the best way, oh, by the way, to be someone is to realize that you are no one apart from Jesus Christ. Christ. Number two, profession does not equal possession, of whom ye say that he is your God. You remember Matthew 7? In that day, many will say unto me, Lord, Lord. And Jesus will look out over that multitude and say, listen. I don't know you. They were professors, but not possessors. So we're not talking about, when you think about it, a lost, unbelieving world, but the religious society, those who claim to know him, but do not. Thirdly, using what Jesus said, what I do is the proof of who I am. Now you let that sink in. What I do is the proof of who I am. Jesus said, I keep his saying. And then fourthly, telling the truth is not the cure for accusations against you. But nonetheless, always speak truth, no matter the response by those who seek to condemn you. Now the prosecution resumes third accusation then said the Jews unto him you're not even 50 years old how is it possible that you've seen Abraham or flip it Abraham has seen you I mean put yourself in their position we got him now they were convinced the Lord had dug his own grave. They had him where they wanted him. How could he argue his way out of such a ludicrous assertion? The math didn't add up. Abraham had been dead for more than 4,000 years. And Jesus was what? Not yet 50. At this point, they were dancing in the streets. They were celebrating their victory. They may have thought after confronting him with their truth, Jesus would just concede and go away. But again, they were wrong. Amen. The answer. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, by the way, that's amen, amen. Or, amen, amen, Brother Randy. I say unto you, oh, I love this, before Abraham was, I am. Amen, amen. Listen closely. What I'm about to say is important for you to hear and to understand. Your math is wrong. 
Before Abraham was born, I existed. And not that he existed. And by the way, he didn't say I was. But that he existed as I am. The ego in me. Now to understand that, go back into your history. Moses is out on the wilderness, out in the wilderness, tending to his flocks, by his daddy-in-law's flock. And he looked in the distance and he saw a bush that burned. He watched for a while and what he discovered, the bush burned, but it was not consumed. And so he began to make his way as he approached the bush. A voice. Take off your shoes, for the ground whereon you stand is holy. In other words, Moses, you're about to enter the presence of God. By the way, we can learn a lot from that little story. After a brief conversation, and God is commissioning Moses to go back and to lead the nation of Israel out of bondage from Egypt, Moses asked the question, Well, Lord, I'll go do that, but... Who am I going to tell them sent me? What is your name? Are you ready? And the boy said, you tell them, I am that I am sent you. Amen. And so the Lord's answer to the religious leaders that day, I am that I am. I am God. <laughs> the Pharisees huddled together and they said, well, that makes sense. No. This statement infuriated the Pharisee because now they understood it was clear that Jesus was invoking the name of God for his own. Stop the application, which is really just a reminder. Jesus was not just a man, a good man or a great man. He was God manifested in the flesh. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things that were made were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. 1 Timothy 3, 16, without controversy, great is the mystery of God in us. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Amen. I am. After the Lord's answer, the courtroom erupted in anger. Hearts burned white hot. So next we see the altercation. Then they took up stones to stone him. Case prosecuted and proven. Or so they believed. Prosecution was ready and willing to confer and carry out the sentence of death prescribed by the law. Execution by stoning. For he was guilty, they would later say, at the end of his ministry, of blasphemy against God. Driven by hatred, not righteous judgment, not the spirit, not the will of God, they gathered stones sufficient to inflict physical death to hurl at the Savior. Now pump your brakes. What Jesus could have done, he didn't do. What he did might surprise you. He ran. You don't like that, do you? The avoidance. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Jesus could have submitted himself to the Pharisees for their nefarious intention. But as we've already learned, his time was not yet. 
So he used the crowd to do what? To escape. Waiting to fight another day. Now here's our final application. A lesson to be learned. Three things from this part of the story. Don't be like the legalistic leaders, the Pharisees, the religious rulers. Never act in haste. That's what they did. Number two. When representing God, make sure what you propose is His will. Because that's what they did. They said, the will of the Lord, the law has said. And here's an oh, by the way, God's will will never run contrary to God's word. Amen. If what you say violates His word, let me promise you it is not His will. That's right. But here's the third thing. Like Jesus, sometimes there is a time to stay and fight. And then sometimes is a time to avoid the conflict. Only wisdom knows when. Now let me close. The religious leaders <clears throat> attempted to convince the unbelieving world, their crowd, that Jesus was not who he said he was. Again, some said just a man. Oh, maybe a good man. Maybe a good man with good intentions. Others claimed a misguided individual who may have lost touch with reality. Inferring he was of Ill illegitimate birth. They attacked him spiritually, claiming he was a Samaritan and therefore defiled before God. Jesus was, they claimed, full circle, either a liar. Or a lunatic. He was either a con or he was crazy. That guy's not much has changed. Many attest today that Jesus is a myth, a made up fantasy by the foolish. Some say he was a historical figure, martyred for a fool's errand. Some who believe his divine appointment. Say Jesus is a way among many ways, but not the only way. I close the arguments with this declaration. Jesus Christ is the Son of God who became the Son of Man, the sacrifice for sin. His death was the atonement for man's salvation. He is the only way to an eternal relationship with the Heavenly Father. Amen. Now listen. Somewhere in the future, there will be another day in court. Revelation 20. The great white throne judgment of God. Those who have rejected the claims of Christ will be judged by the Father, sentenced to eternal death in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Now listen to me. There will be no one found innocent at the great white throne judgment. Only guilty verdicts. But there is some good news. Today there's good news. The only way to avoid the sentence of death and hell is to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life. And when to do that is right now. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. And you're going to have that opportunity for in just a minute an invitation will be given. This is not the pastor's invitation to you. This is not the church's invitation to you. This is God's invitation to you delivered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I will encourage you. R-S-V-P, yes, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name. In a lot of ways, I'm kind of glad to be getting out of chapter 8. The constant back and forth, the accusations made by religious people against your Son, our Savior. 
But I'm thankful that the Lord stood his ground. And he had the answers. That had they heard, not with their ears, but with their heart, would have vindicated the truth he was speaking. That he was the Son of God, the Savior, the sacrifice, the Messiah, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the Lord of glory. And Lord, I'm kind of thankful that when I come to the end of this chapter, you walked away because the cross was not ready. You had, done not, had not done everything needed to be done before submitting yourself into the hands of the enemy. There would come a day when you would say, here I am. Do with me what you will. It's not your will. It's my Father's will. Father, this morning in this congregation, there are those who have heard with their ears, but they've not responded yet with their hearts. And I pray, Lord, today that they not delay. They would not fall for the lies of the world, but would listen to the truth by the Spirit of God as He proclaims the Word of God. And would step out, walk down this aisle, because you've invited them and pray to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. For in that moment, you will say over their life, innocent. God, I pray no one here this morning will stand at that last day and hear the verdict, guilty, and the sentence of death and hell. Lord, have your way in all of our lives today. For there was much to apply from this passage to the believers living. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask that you stand, every head bowed, every eye closed. The altars are open and available. Your pastor is here at the front if you need someone to pray with. I invite you to come. Yeah.